law, it's also stated underneath, at the end of almost every law, at the judge's discretion. So depending on what judge well, this she gets, is, that's right. And then this, the law almost means nothing. Uh, state or, law. State law. You, then right. you have to go to further. This is sure. the problem. When custody must be spelled out because of uh, the individual couple's divorce, the custody arrangement usually becomes part of the divorce grade. The decree uh, names the parent with whom the child will live, how visitation will be handled, and who will provide financial support. Courts consider a custody award to be subject to change so throughout the child's life until the child becomes of age. And in most states, proof of a change in circumstances may overturn an earlier decision or sure. reward. So you can be going through this process depending on how old the child is. Yeah. This flexibility is intended to allow for the corrections of poor or outdated decisions, but consequently what it enables some parents to do is wage a bitter custody battle that can last for years. One of which <laughs> this is true. You it, you, it you have found on. yourself. Well, you've been in the court process for years. I've been in the court process since '96, and sometimes what you find too, or I'm finding in, in my case, is too many, too many cooks in the kitchen, too many people involved. I have found that if there weren't so many lawyers and so many lawyers for him and so many lawyers for me and so many lawyers for the child and the guardian ad litem, and the whatever the case may be, too many people with too many opinions, I honestly think that even with my unusual extenuating circumstances, my ex-husband and I could have solved this problem probably 10 years ago without so much other, so many other people involved that had their own agendas. Well, I want to make sure and what is clear is mm -hmm. that you, you, you have not, you don't not have your child because of any kind of abuse or anything like that. In Absolutely fact, not. you had when you I had sole custody initially. When right? I left, well, when we were first separated, there was joint custody. So sure. on the day that I actually left here to go get other help, mm -hmm. there was still joint custody. I think I had said in the last taping, the only reason it was ever changed to sole custody was, um, it's a technicality in order to bring a, a mother and child or a father and child back to the state. It had nothing to do with anything else because my son's attorney, attorney Lori Hellum, had testified in my trial that she had never was never going to recommend that Jeff even had full joint custody or full 50% visitation based on her interviews with all the professionals involved. There were too many issues. And even when I came back and was arrested and investigations were done, no neglect was, a, was found, no abuse was, a found, was found, absolutely nothing. And I was found not guilty. There was nothing against me found inappropriate with regard to my son at all. Well, after that, you were given, again, in decree, there's a decree that says you have visitation rights. There is a decree that says I have visitation, and aside from that decree, we even made another separate agreement during a separate mediation, not even in the family court, um, where we outlined other, how we were going to go about it, you know, the the format. The procedure. The procedure. This month we were going to do this, next month we're right. going to do the next thing, and we're going to start moving into more normalcy and moving back into normal visitation and moving back into joint custody. That was the aim since there was nothing against me found and the trial was over, et cetera, et cetera. And um, on that particular day in court in July of 05, the agreement was that I would turn joint custody, I would sign joint custody over to my ex-husband and his brother. My ex-husband still doesn't have full custody, never did. If I wanted this this plan to take effect, this plan to take I knew I was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I didn't want to sign away custody to my ex and his brother, but my only focus was seeing my son more. Mm -hmm. So I trusted that if I signed this, and we all signed it, that this was what was going to happen. And if I didn't sign it, then it would look like I didn't want my child, which of course is the only thing in the world I want. So I signed it, and a month later, or two months later, was the last time I've seen him. Do you know what criminals call that? What? They call it bait and hook. Yeah, okay. okay? They give you bait, then they hook you, and then they yeah. give you the shaft. That's exactly That's exactly bait and hook, yeah. okay? If anybody understands of that. that right. So f from that, mm -hmm. then you haven't, you haven't had, 
You haven't had visitation. Is that right? I haven't right? had a Am phone I call. I haven't had contact. I haven't had any information. Not even since when? Since October two thousand five. Not even school records and medical records, which I am entitled to. Ex nothing. So nobody Absolutely talks nothing. to you about the health care or the child or anything. One of the reasons, okay. and, and, and we came back to you and we yeah. were talking to you, is we wanted to make sure, that because we sent your other tape to the Chief Justice right. and we haven't got a response mm -hmm. and uh, maybe she's busy, maybe whatever, <laughs> that the court doesn't want to hear this because sure. the child is close to being of age mm -hmm. and this is going to become moot very quickly. We thought yes. we thought maybe federal court was uh, the best way to go, as I'll talk about that right. a little bit on further in the show. However, my concern, and I want mm -hmm. you, to, my concern became, what if you go through this and you don't get it? Your child thinks that you have abandoned them, and will mm -hmm. unless the other parties involved. Uh, saying no, mommy's been trying to get you, and there's mm -hmm. whatever the technicalities is for all extensive purposes, mm -hmm. and I we don't I don't see that in the best interest of a child. So without some kind of recording and written record, and I know you got papers, and I know you got this, mm -hmm. but it's interesting about shows. Mm -hmm. you're, you're on the show. Right. Um, you, you, you're stressed, and you <laughs> you know okay. you know, and, here, and, and you're here, yeah. and and. We're making a record that your child is able to see mm -hmm. that mommy's tried everything. Because what you had just said, that's my greatest fear. And aside from the continual worry that never leaves my heart in the pit of my stomach is, what is he being told? Is he being told that, that mommy did something wrong and she can't see you or that mommy doesn't want to see you? Is he being told that mommy doesn't live here anymore, that she abandoned you? I mean, I all these awful thoughts you can't help it go through my head all the time and the other thing I think too is when I finally when he does turn of age and I can legally contact him I know it's going to be a long effort to try to make just to get him to talk to just me just to get him to talk to, to you because you just anything. you don't know where where his thoughts are so going I, I to be I don't know they're going but the other problem is I wouldn't I would never have wanted to have to rehash everything that went wrong and everything that happened and everything I did and the courts aren't doing anything in his best interest because the only way I'm ever going to be able to make him understand now is to rehash, is to rehash. whereas yeah. if we had had some normal normalcy these past five years we could just stop it all that not I'm not saying it's okay and some terrible things happened in the past but I wouldn't have to rehash it with him he wouldn't have to relive it now the only way that I'm only ever going to be able to make him understand when he's 18 19 20 is to rehash everything and that is absolutely not in his best interest and I don't know who thinks it's going to be. Well, this is the this is the amazing thing to us mm -hmm. and a, as we as we're going through and we're and and we're finding it it really totally depends on who you're working with with the system. Yes. Okay? And uh, uh, and I I'm not through, and it obviously is going to take some time. We found out. We thought it was a little easier than uh, it's turned out to be right. uh, because we do work in the court. We do advocacy and stuff like that. Advocacy is much more difficult here than I found any place else. Now, I have done advocacy in Massachusetts where uh, basically because I was a jailhouse lawyer and stuff like that, I could go up to the bar. I could almost act as a friend of the court. Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts is very open. They'll correct you and everything else like that. It isn't uh, so that the lawyers are such that they're trying to keep you away from for people yeah. who can't afford something. Right. It was very, very easy. I've done it in uh, New Hampshire, uh, in Arizona extensively. In Arizona, even Arizona was was easy to do advocacy mm -hmm. without being a licensed attorney and stuff like that. It was easy to do uh, assistance uh, because um, uh, the, I gained my legal expertise and from a negative <laughs> response. Well, but it was <laughs> most people now. <laughs> you know, from my from my younger days of uh, you know be, being in prison and having to learn the law, and um, and uh, and probably would have became an attorney except for 
I, I knew that uh, you know they didn't they didn't appreciate that and don't want <laughs> they don't want convicts to become attorneys, and and uh, there's too much against you. However, I uh, being in the system, obviously I have a lot of knowledge about the system mm -hmm. and how the court system works and what happens in the issue.